What's up guys? So today we're gonna to talk about some do-it-yourself perfumery basics. Uh, I know a lot of you that may get starting in uh, making your own perfumes at home. You just kind of dive right in and just start mixing up a bunch of stuff and you're always wondering, well, why does it smell like crap? So I wanted to talk about something that doesn't get talked about often, uh, especially for newcomers that start doing this. Uh, so the two things you'll want to know about understanding and knowing your ingredients that you're working with is odor profile strength, meaning how strong the odor is of the material you're working with. And by that, I mean, uh, if you smell something, you put a little drop on your hand, you smell it, you could either smell it from real far away and be like, wow, that's really strong. It's got a strong odor strength. Or you really have to kind of dig deep in there and be like, I smell it, but it's kind of faint. And that's a lower odor profile strength. The second part you'll want to understand is the evaporation curve of the material you're working with. An evaporation curve is actually something to do with longevity of the actual material you're working with. Usually that's determined by uh, the length in hours. A lot of people test this on paper strips. They'll put a little bit on a strip and they'll just check it every so many hours, every so many days. Some materials could last weeks on a paper strip and that determines how long the odor lasts. So when you're creating a perfume yourself, you wanna understand these two relationships between a single material when you're blending it with other materials because uh, in a perfume composition, you want a nice clean evaporation curve from beginning to end and you don't want it to be choppy where certain things jump out at you. You just want one smooth continuous curve from the minute you spray it on until like eight hours down the road. It's just nice smooth evaporation curve. So first, let's talk about odor longevity. So the best thing to do is when you're buying your aroma chemicals, your uh, essential oils, wherever you buy it from, hopefully they actually state on the product page the longevity. Usually it's stated on hours uh, based on a, a paper strip. If they don't uh, give that information, there's another source you can look at. It's uh, the goodsensecompany.com and they list a ton of aroma chemicals and perfumery uh, materials in which it'll state uh, what it is, what it smells like, the how long it lasts on a paper strip. So this is all great information that you're gonna definitely want to know. Um, so understanding the evaporation curve is just basically understanding how long it's gonna last on a paper strip so you have a clear understanding of where this material is gonna play a role in your perfume. So to give you a few examples, something like uh, bergamot, essential oil, is a very short lifespan. It has a very low evaporation curve, uh, meaning you can rub it on your skin, spray it on, you'll probably smell it very strongly for like maybe the first hour, the first two hours, and then it pretty much is gone and it's evaporated. It's a very high volatile aroma chemical or essential oil. Uh, on the opposite flip end of that spectrum, you can look at things like musks, uh, things like woods, like cedar woods. These are very long odor profile evaporation curves and these can last 200 up to 400 hours on a paper strip. So to get a clear understanding what that means to you, it kind of helps you determine the material that you're working with. Is it a top note? Is it a middle note? Or is it a base note? Generally, things that have a very long evaporation cur uh, curve that lasts a long time are gonna fall in your base notes. Something that has a very short evaporation curve is gonna be probably your top notes. And then you're gonna have a bunch of aroma chemicals in between that could be constituted as a middle note. So odor profile strength. That now is kind of like, think of it as a vertical thing. Uh, think of it in terms of how strong, how pungent that aroma chemical can actually be. Um, now there's no clear place where you can get this information. You actually just have to learn this stuff on your own as you understand your materials that you're working with. So 
To give the example again now back to bergamot oil. Bergamot oil is a, is a relatively medium odor strength. The best way to do this is visualize in your head all, all your materials that you're going to be working with in this fragrance that you're going to be creating. Um, as you smell all your different ingredients before you start even mixing them, get a, you, ha you have to gauge how strong these are in relationships to each other. Um, the best way to do that is to kind of assign it a number, engage it from zero to 500. 500 meaning it's off the charts, wicked strong. Uh, something low like maybe 10 or 20 is something with a very low odor profile, meaning you can, it's barely detectable. So how these two play a role together. And the best way to do that is, I'm gonna show you just a, a very basic chart. So as you're, as you're building your perfumes, you should be visualizing in your head this kind of chart. So when you're mapping out all your different materials, aromatic chemicals and oils, that you have a good understanding of how strong they are in relationship to each other. So when you're making it by, if you're doing drop by drop or if you're weighing it on a scale, as you're adding in ingredients, you have a good uh, identification of how strong it is and at what point in time does it does the strength either evaporate or and also what other aroma chemicals kind of make an appearance over time so let's just take a look at this chart for some examples of what we can be looking at so looking at this chart so you'll see on the left hand side where it says odor impact i've assigned it uh, kind of zeros at the bottom and it goes to 200 and beyond uh, now on the horizontal axis, again, it goes zero, meaning hours on a strip and all the way to 400 plus hours. So taking a look at three basic ingredients, let's say you're working with bergamot and then you have a rose accord and then you have musk. So as you look at bergamot in green on this chart, you can see that I assigned an odor impact of roughly about maybe 150. So it's, it's kind of in the middle of the road. There's some aroma chemicals out there that can go as high as 500, but as a baseline, I usually say 100 is a good middle of the road, not too strong, not too weak. It's just average odor strength. So bergamot is a little bit above average. So I, get, I assigned it a, a 150 odor impact. Now, as you look at the evaporation curve, you can see that it only lasts on a paper strip roughly a little under 20 hours. So now looking at your rose accord, rose isn't quite as strong as bergamot. So it's roughly maybe just shy of like 120 in terms of odor impact. And, but it lasts much longer on a paper strip. You can see here that it actually lasts now about 100 hours on a paper strip. And then finally looking at something like musk, uh, you can see it's a very low odor impact. I assigned it a value of 40 but it lasts a long time on a paper strip, 40 or 400 hours plus. So as you're looking at this chart, you can kind of see the relationship curve of these three materials together. So when you're sniffing your perfume for the first one to two hours, you can kind of see what you're gonna be smelling the most of versus what you're gonna be smelling the least of. And then as time progresses, you're gonna see maybe around the 50 hour mark, you're gonna be like, well, I don't really get much bergamot anymore, but I still, get a lot of rows and I'm picking up more of the musk now. And then as time goes on, you can see when you're past 200 hours plus, bergamot and rose has evaporated and now you're just left, left with musk as a skin scent. Also to note, uh, the above chart that is shown now is actually with just one drop of each uh, material. So one drop bergamot, one drop rose, one drop musk. So you can further manipulate this chart by adding in more quantity of any given aroma chemical. So if you wanted the musk to be more prominent or more dominant in your perfume, just add two drops, which would then make the odor strength from 40 to almost 80. Uh, same thing with rose. Uh, if you wanted more rose, you can add more in there. So you can see in this chart, you could actually manipulate odor strength of multiple uh, aroma chemicals by just simply adding in more than just one drop. So this chart is just a representative of what would happen if you did one drop of bergamot, one drop of rose, one drop of musk. 
So now looking at this, this is just basically three ingredients. Now uh, a perfume could have anywhere up to 20, 30, 40 different ingredients, aroma chemicals, and it gets very complex. So this is why you can understand uh, the necessity to know and uh, understand how your materials interact with, with each other. So looking back at that first chart, you can see it kind of had some choppiness where it started off a lot of bergamot and then it just kind of cuts into rose and then it just kind of cuts into the musk. Now let's see what happens when we add some different, uh, more aroma chemicals. And uh, this time you'll see with more different uh, odor profile strengths and different uh, hours on a paper strip, the longevity, you can kind of smooth out that curve so it's not so choppy. Now the biggest uh, problem a lot of newcomers face is when they smell their perfume after making it, they're like, oh, it smells great for the first hour. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't smell anything. Like, where did my scent go? They have to, they probably didn't understand the relationship between all the materials that they're working with. So looking at this next chart, now you can see we've added in some cardamom and we've also added in some cedar wood. So the cardamom is actually smoothed out slightly that gap in between bergamot and rose. So when you get to about maybe 1.5 hours on a paper strip, you'll notice it's still maybe detectable bergamot, but the cardamom kicks in pretty strong and the rose is still detectable. So it's not as jerky as going from just bergamot to rose. You have now a nice smooth curve from bergamot to cardamom to rose. And then as you'll notice, as the cedar wood's now introduced, it's actually a slightly higher odor impact than musk. So that will now kick in before you get any heavily detectables of musk. So your curve now just looks a little bit more smoother and you can now feel that your perfume is starting to feel a little bit more complete. So now looking at this, uh, you're probably thinking, okay, this is a lot to probably grasp and understand. So hopefully this is kind of like the, the toned down version, just so you can get a basic grasp and understanding of how materials work together, odor strength versus longevity. So the best thing to do with this information is most of you are probably working on like a little notebook, making notes of all your things that you're adding to perfume. You're, you're adding so many drops to this, so many drops of that. You actually should have a database of your materials. I personally do. I love Google Sheets, which is an online database. You, it's like a glorified Excel that you can access it online. I access it through my smartphone, my tablet, my computer at any time, anywhere I'm at, I can always access it. And I list every material that I own and I identify what is the implied odor strength that I gave it, how long does it last on a paper strip, what is its odor profile, like is it a citrus, is it a wood, is it a, is it a fruit. Uh, I also give it all other information, like I'll be like, this is suitable for a base note, this is suitable for a top note, this is, you know, I classify things. So it's always best practice to have a big database of all your materials and aroma chemicals. So as you're building your perfume, yes, you can still write down on a piece of paper, like a little note of what you're adding in, but you should actually go and refer to your database too, so you understand all these different strengths and longevities of everything that you add. So. With that being said, that's it. That was just a quick crash course and uh, hopefully understanding your materials a little bit better so the next time you go and attempt to uh, a new perfume, you kind of have a new approach in your head of how you can kind of attack things. So that's it. Until next time.